Hello and welcome back to the OTB channel. So we're approaching the end of the year today. It's New Year's Eve 2021 and I've been thinking about what to do, how to bring the end of the year to a close. And one of the things that's been nagging at me is despite being quite a challenging year for everybody due to this virus that's out there, none of us are escaping the cultural move that's affecting all of us and also affecting Linux, I think, in that everybody seems to be apologetic all the time, apologizing for what they do, how they think, how they feel, to the extent that at times it feels a little bit like we're walking on broken glass. So this is going to be an opinion piece. And uh, for that, I make no apologies, but I am going to wrap it around Linux and see what you think. See you after the intro. Okay, welcome back. So I don't normally do one of these uh, opinion pieces, and I'm going to try and not make it sound like a rant, but it could be a rant if I let it go that way. Um, but I'm going to go through, I'm going to follow my stream of thought regarding this stop apologizing theme. And I've got various sections that I'm going to talk about, but I don't quite know what order I'm going to talk about them in at the moment. So I may well break this up with uh, a couple of slides just going on to the next section, so please bear with me. But let's start by me saying that at the end of 2021, I think Linux on the desktop is doing just fine. It's user-friendly. It's simple to use. It's very intuitive. Um, it allows you to do all sorts of things. You know, whatever customization or tweaking you need to do, Linux will allow you to do that more than any other operating system. Now, by calling it user-friendly, that's perhaps controversial in itself. But I think it depends on what you're measuring user-friendliness against. I can only say, when I started using the Linux desktop uh, 18 years ago, I had, at the time, three young sons. Every one of those uh, sons used Linux because that's what I installed on their computers, which I'd also built. Not one of them had an issue using Linux. They all took to it immediately. They found it intuitive. They could launch the web browser. They could go to Facebook. They could do whatever they needed to do. And thinking about this, why did they find it so easy and yet people like Linus from Linux Tech Tips has found it so difficult? I think really depends on where you're coming from and what you're measuring Linux against. Now, there's lots of YouTubers out there that have looked at uh, the Linus Tech Tips uh, videos where they did the one month challenge. And some of them have, have kind of taken on board what Linus has said. Others have treated it as, as generally annoying, you know, and uh, ill-informed. My view on it after watching those videos is that I didn't really want to touch on them because I saw them as largely irrelevant. They did a challenge where they were evaluating an operating system and whether Windows users could switch to an operating system seamlessly. Um, and the evaluation seemed to be largely based, initially at least, on whether or not Windows games could be run on Linux. Well, yes, they can. But most games are made for Windows. So you wouldn't expect the experience to be see as seamless on a different operating system. An operating system that is not actually designed to run those games. The fact that it does is mind-blowing to me. It's black magic. But to evaluate a whole operating system on the basis of does it run Windows games seamlessly, to me is just messed up. Yes, I know they didn't focus just on games. They also did, you know, the normal user way of doing things. 
And all I could hear through that was, was the likes of Linus uh, whinging that, oh, this isn't how it works in Windows. The Linux community needs to change this and make it more user-friendly. Well, it was pointed out to you know Linus that at the end of the day, this isn't how uh, Linux operates. It doesn't operate like Windows because Linux is not Windows. And Linus's response to that really was that 99% plus of uh, computer using or computer users out there would expect Linux to work in a certain way and to work in the way that Windows works simply because that's the way they've been brought up. Well, I had an issue with that. Firstly, what is the point? of changing an operating system into a clone of another operating system. It almost defeats the purpose of a separate operating system existing. I was brought up in an era in school in the 70s, 60s and 70s, where computers weren't on the agenda. And so I came to computers rather later in life. So I wasn't indoctrinated with the Windows way of doing things. And I started playing around with DOS in the 80s. I moved on to Windows 3.1 in the 90s, then on to Linux in uh, the 2000s, 2004, I think it was. And I even had to play with Mac OS for three or four years, uh, four or five years ago. My view is I don't hate any operating system. I think they all have their strengths and weaknesses. And personally, I enjoy using them all. Um... In fact, when you hear some Linux users refer to, to Windows as wind blows or something, the first thought that goes through my head is, for God's sake, grow up. All operating systems have positive and negative points. They really do. And I still use Windows for work. My preferred operating system, though, is Linux. And I will use that as often as I possibly can, although it isn't all of the time. But I don't think that Linux, in order to become more user-friendly, that's a word, isn't it, user-friendly, needs to become more like Windows. Because user-friendly seems to be used in this kind of context of it needs to work like Windows so that Windows users can transfer to it seamlessly and you know, be able to use it without any issues at all, without any reading and without any work. Well, guys, that's just not the way it works. There's this theory out there. It's an economic theory called convergence. And the idea is that eventually all economic systems will converge into one particular format where they all essentially operate in the same way. And there seems to be this drive, this undercurrent, to force Linux down this path. Maybe it's just me, but that, that's, that's often what I seem to be picking up, that we've got this drive to make Linux more user-friendly. But user-friendly means acting more like Windows. And what's the reason for this? Well, it seems to be hidden in this, this driving the market share of Linux up you know, getting more and more users using our operating system. Why do they want to do that? I don't know. It's not clear to me. Because if increasing our market share means that we just become another clone of Windows, the question that I'm faced with is, well, if Linux is just like Windows and everybody's already got Windows – just use Windows. What's the point of using Linux anymore? Is it just me? <laughs> that That's what I tend to think. It's the uniqueness and difference between operating systems that makes them more interesting. So market share, I couldn't care less about market share. Linux, as far as I'm concerned, is perfect the way it is. Yes, like all operating systems, it has flaws. But nevertheless, it's made huge strides even in the 18 years that I've been using it. So let's have a think about what it is. Linux is a Unix-based or a Unix-like operating system 
that came about in the 1990s thanks to the kernel being developed by uh, Linus Torvalds and the work put in by the GNU guys. It's made great strides in the world of servers and it now rules the world in, in terms of uh, you know server operating systems. Why? Because it's secure, it's reliable, it does what you need it to do. On the desktop, though, mm, less so. It's not made great start, strides, and, and my view is that it probably won't. The reason it won't is, well, in a nutshell, people do not get a computer, generally speaking, pre-installed with Linux. So the vast majority of users out there who probably aren't particularly technical are going to stick with what they've got on their system, which will be Windows in the main. And in order to kind of convert it to Linux, you're going to have to do what we as Linux users probably take for granted now. You're probably going to have to burn an ISO onto a USB stick. You're going to have to bring up a boot menu from your BIOS, from one of the BIOS keys, and you're going to have to do the installation. Most people are never going to do that. Also, if the majority of users are not really interested in Linux itself, they're just, you know, having a try, well, they may well be disappointed because Linux is not Windows. It does not work in the same way. And so the experience will always be seamless. It's not a reason for us to apologize. Linux is a thing in itself. It's, uh, it consists of thousands of distros out there, or hundreds at least. It consists of lots of different components. It still consists of the terminal, which is a central component of uh, the operating system and not something to be eventually got rid of. I mean, at the end of the day, a big part of using Linux is on servers where it's run headless. And so everything is managed through the command line. The command line isn't going to go away. And once you learn to use the command line, you would never want to be without it. However, that's not going to appeal to an awful lot of users out there who will have a go and will probably go back to using Windows if they're not technically minded and they're not interested in trying this operating system for the sake of just seeing how it works. I do believe you've got to have a particular technical flair. You don't have to be a developer. I'm not a developer, but I have always been interested in technology and going back, you know, in the days before computers, I was one of the first adopters of the Zion, you know, handheld devices and palm handheld devices and anything that came out I wanted to be involved in. So I've always been interested in technology. But, you know, most people of my generation especially have no interest in computers. Most of them don't even own one. So the computer users who are out there in general will not be interested in switching. They do not have the technical mindset. And the fact is you do need a technical mindset to use Linux if all you've learned so far whilst you've been growing up, you've been socialized into the Windows way of doing things, that's what you're going to expect. But it's not the only way. And it shouldn't be converged so that it is the only way. I was driving, I went to visit my mother in Manchester yesterday. And uh, as I was driving back, I was listening to the Linux Lads podcast. And one of the guys made, made a comment which stuck with me. Uh, and kind of triggered, really, the, the, this this little rant, this opinion piece. He said, um, the thing about Linux and Windows, it's almost like comparing somebody who drives, you know, an old pickup truck and somebody who drives a Ferrari. You wouldn't expect to get out of your pickup truck and for the first time ever step into the Ferrari and drive exactly as you've always been doing. That way only lies danger, and you're probably going to crash the thing. You're going to need to learn how to drive that Ferrari. And Linux is the same. Whether you equate Linux with the Ferrari or with the pickup truck is up to yourself. It doesn't really matter. The analogy works both ways. 
you're going to have to do the work. The fact of the matter is, most people aren't prepared to do the work. They don't have the interest. That's not a judgment against them. It's just not one of their interest points. And as long as that is the case, well, Linux and its market share will be tiny. And to be honest, I'm good with that. So in a nutshell, we've no need to apologize for Linux. Linux is doing really well. Yes, it appeals only to a subset of computer users. That's fine as far as I'm concerned. It is what it is. It's successful in some areas, not as successful in others, but that really doesn't matter. Even though for those people who do get into Linux, who perhaps have that technical inquiring mindset, and they attempt to move over, there are pressures. And pressures are due to the reality of the uh, world we live in. And I often see them on various forums where they almost are apologetic for what they say they have to do. You know, I have to use such and such a program, so I'm afraid I still have to dual boot, or uh, I have to use a, a particular type of distro because it's the only one that works with my graphics card. Well, I don't understand really why why people should be apologetic at all. We live in a real world. So I live in a real world where... I work for a company, and I do have a Windows laptop, uh, which is completely locked down. I can't even change the wallpaper on it. And my company is basically driven by Microsoft Office and all aspects of Microsoft Office to the extent, <coughs> to the extent that uh, even my desktop and my documents folder are simply mapped onto a, a corporate version of OneDrive. Now, I'm fine with that. And in fact, I've, I've been using Microsoft Office for years, and Microsoft Office is a great program. If we ever got a native version on Linux, I would be one of the first adopters, because it is the thing for me that prevents me just using Linux and Linux alone. I don't live in that world, unfortunately. So what I end up doing is I end up with my Windows laptop open during the day, but I also have my, my Linux uh, uh, system open with, with the big screen, and I swap and change between them. So I will use the likes of Microsoft Teams, and I seem to spend my life in Teams, um, on my Linux desktop because it works very well. I will occasionally go to the Microsoft Office Online version, which you can look at any brow in uh, any browser. It doesn't matter what your operating system is. But the bottom line is, when I need to get some serious work done in Access, Excel, or Word, I will probably stay on the laptop. That's not a reason to apologize. That's just the way things are. Now, I don't want to denigrate in any way the software that we have in Linux. The software that we have in Linux is brilliant. You know, LibreOffice is a great office suite. Uh, we have the GIMP, which is absolutely superb uh, in terms of image manipulation. And if you don't have to worry about compatibility, there is no reason why you couldn't use Linux programs natively. People feel, though, or seem to feel that they have to apologize if they can't do a complete conversion over to Linux. And unfortunately, the world just doesn't work like that. If I worked in for a company that used LibreOffice, it wouldn't be a problem for me. But unfortunately, I don't. So I have this hybrid working mode uh, where I'll swap and change between Linux and Windows. For 16 years, I dual booted for the same reason. I no longer dual boot. My home computers all have Linux on, and I just have my work laptop with Windows on. But it works well for me. Bottom line is, you do what you need to do. I think there's also some pressure out there that people think that they should be going in a certain direction. And part of the Linux community is, is responsible for 
generating a feeling that you should be apologetic. Um, you've got the Free Software Foundation, for instance, uh, that that's kind of promoting completely free and open source distro- distros. I mean, I, I've got the page open here. I'm, I'm looking at the likes of uh, uh, Triskel or Atuto or Hyperbola. At the end of the day, those distros are not very popular for a reason. We'd all like things to be completely free and open source, but unfortunately, we'd all also like our, our wireless networks to work, and we'd like to get the best performance that we can out of using, you know, our NVIDIA cards, for instance. And so we have to make compromises all the way along. There is a sense, though, if you watch some uh, YouTubers, that, that it's almost like a religious fervor that free and open source software is the only way. And it would be lovely if we could all live like that, but unfortunately we can't. We have to deal with reality. We have to cope with what we've got and what we're given, and you shouldn't feel guilty about that. If you're using Linux and you've found the operating system useful and you're getting to know it and you're learning about it, that's all good. If you have to make compromises, you have to make compromises. Now, Linux is pretty inventive. I mean, we have this thing called Wine where you can run some Windows programs. The bottom line is, though, yes, you can get Microsoft Office working in it. Does it work as seamlessly as it does in Windows? No, it doesn't. Um, yes, there is a level of compatibility in the likes of LibreOffice with Microsoft Office. Is it completely compatible? Is it seamless? No, it isn't. And let's face it, there's no reason why it should be. So this isn't a criticism of LibreOffice. It's simply a criticism of the way things are at the moment. We have to fall into that compatibility uh, frame. So however you use Linux, don't feel under pressure. Of course, you're probably going to feel under pressure anyway, because the way society is going, there's always a reason to apologize and to be careful what you're saying. And this is where we come to things like the GNOME Code of Conduct. And if you want to know my views of that, well, by all means, you know, go and have a look at my video on it. But there is a tendency for people these days to dictate to you what they think you should do and what you should say. Well, if you're anything like me, if somebody tries to tell me to do that, I'll probably do the opposite, which is why I will only ever use the word Linux and I will never use the word GNU Linux. Not because I don't uh, agree that GNU made a significant contribution to what we now call Linux. I just think it's an unwieldy name. And I don't like being told what to do. So there's no need to apologize however you use Linux. If you've moved over and you're finding it good, well, great. And Linux is doing fine, and Linux users are doing fine at the end of 2021. And I don't see that ending. Right, so that's the end of my New Year rant. Um, I'd like to think, though, that it's been pretty positive throughout. Uh, I've had some things I've wanted to say and get off my chest for a while, but I think Linux is in a good place at the moment. Um, it requires users who have a particular technical orientation. They're the ones who are going to, going to get the most out of the system. Um, but it has a feature set and a usability that appeals to people like me who really like to get under the hood and tinker with the system. Linux is great. You may have to uh, make some compromises, just like I do, in order to use it. But if you want to have a look at it and you're serious about learning a new system, don't hesitate for a minute. Linux is pretty good in 2021. And uh, I hope we don't get too much uh, convergence towards the Windows way of doing things in the future. I hope we stay unique because it's our uniqueness that gives us our strength really so that's it for 2021 i'll see you in 2022 have a great new year's eve uh, i'll raise a pint to all of you guys and uh, i'll see you in about a week or so and by the way as normal i would just like to thank all these wonderful people here my patrons thanks for the support you've given me so far guys 
and Happy New Year to you all.